I hope you have watched the other um, habits which, which have been illustrated by my colleagues. And we are coming to an end of this topic. But I, like I said in the beginning, it's not the end. It's the beginning of a journey. One habit that I want to leave you with, with which is not really, you know, I, I, I started getting into this habit about, about one week ago. I was teaching my students the 14 habits and I said, wait, I want to look at this habit. And I, you won't believe it. I'm not able to sleep after I read this habit because it's such a powerful habit. Look at this habit. Recognizes that a, a system thinker recognizes that a system structure generates its behavior. What does it mean? It means the structure. Yeah, I'm going to explain it in a very simple way. I want when we when we come to live session, we'll discuss it further. I want you to learn this habit very, very well. Recognizes that a system structure generates its behavior. What does it mean? It means that you build a structure. For instance, you go to a restaurant. What is the structure in a restaurant? You are sitting here and your friend is sitting on the opposite side. There's a table in between. So there is an object in between you and your friend, which means you've created a structure between you and your friend. You have created a boundary. And therefore, I'm actually not even going to say friend. I'm going to say acquaintance. But this boundary prevents you from getting close to each other. It's a structure that you've created, a wall that you've created between the two of you. After some time, if you look at if you look at a, a restaurant, you will find people talking to each other, close to each other. So supposing that friend of his pulls the chair and comes and sits next to you, what does it indicate? It indicates that both of you are very close and you're talking to each other. Actually, it's recommended. It's recommended that when you want to build relationships, you don't sit opposite each other, but you sit sit next to next to each other. How chairs are arranged? structure in your house suppose you come to my house i have i have two large sofas in the living room i have created the sofas are the structure i have created the structure so what happens when you walk into the room you sit down on that sofa which means i'm telling you that's it you can't come anymore inside the house because i've prevented using the structure i have been able to influence your behavior it need not be physical structures. It can also be habits. For instance, I get up in the morning. I get up in the morning and I spend half an hour on WhatsApp. What am I doing? I'm spending half. I'm not saying wasting. Hour, I'm just saying that half an hour of my morning time is gone off into WhatsApp because WhatsApp is a structure. So if I want to change my habit, if I want to change my behavior, if I want to be more productive in the morning, I must remove that structure. That's all. So my behavior is influenced by the structures that I am building, which is the first line. Structures influence the behavior of the system. If, if my children are behaving badly in, in the house, it is because I have created a structure to make them behave badly. I can't blame them. I must blame myself for that structure. If my children don't pay too much attention to their lessons, it's because I am the one who built that structure saying, somewhere I have given the signal saying it's okay not to pay attention to lessons. And look at this habit. Go to the Water Center uh, for, for Systems Thinking. Water Center for Systems Thinking, watercenter.org and read this habit. And there are a lot of exercises you can do. I do not want to bore you with the exercises here because I just want to introduce systems thinking to you. Structures can be physical structures like buildings or laws or policies like government or social structures like traditions and routines. Routines are structure, right? For instance, there's a lovely example of someone wanting to lose weight. He wants to lose weight, but on the way home, there is a, there is a noodle shop. There is a uh, in, 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 in Madras, it's a very famous call called Grand Sweets. On the way, there is Grand Sweets. Tell me, why won't he be tempted to stop by and eat some sweets? Because there's a structure. There's a routine. His routine of walking it makes, makes him encounter Grand Sweets. In my house, 
In my house, I have these large transparent dabbas with a lot of snacks in them. And I know that if I don't want to put on weight, I should not eat snacks. But whenever I pass up and down, I can see those transparent dabbas. At least I should put them inside the bureau or cupboard. I don't do that. And because I see it, I eat. I eat snacks. And because I eat, it's, eat snacks, go back to the consequences. I start gaining weight. How can I blame myself? How can I blame anything? I am the perp. I am the person who is in charge of my life, in charge of my weight. If you desire to change the way a system behaves, do so with changing structure. So simple, no? So simple. Look at why. Now you know why I couldn't sleep, right? Because I can't believe that there is so much truth to three lines. Now, if I have to change the behavior of eating snacks, what do I do? I have to, yes, I have to change the structure. Right? If you have to change behavior, you have to change the structure. Because structure influences behavior. I want you to really now get it. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that all of you are excited about system thinking. We just looked at three habits. Right? There are 11 other habits. Of course, my colleagues will have introduced several other habits. But you must now start reading the habits on your own. You must tell yourself that Every 15 days, you will read, you will become good at one habit. What is the meaning of becoming good at one habit? It means that you will follow that habit, you will remember that habit, you will use that habit, you will apply that habit and you will teach that habit. So at the end of one year, you must be one of those few people in the world who is a systems thinker. There's much more to systems thinking, many, many, many complicated stuff, but don't worry about that. You're learning something very, very simple. I want you to learn it in a simple way. Only if you learn it in a simple way, understand it fully, will you grow up to be great systems thinkers. And if at your age you can start learning systems thinking, can you imagine how wise you will be? I'm using the word wise, W-I-S-E, because if there is one subject to learn wisdom, this is the one. Right? So these are, so what did we do? We learned systems. Systems consists of elements, interconnections, dependencies, interdependencies, and a purpose. The IAT system has elements, connections, interdependencies, and a purpose. Cricket match, elements, interdependencies, and purpose. Um, Swiggy, um, sorry, the food delivery, interconnections. The uh, difference between heap and system, right? We saw several, several one system interacting with another system. And finally, finally, of course, two more slides, sorry. Now, what are the things, what are the questions you ask yourself? You say, how can I move beyond my understanding of a problem or challenge and broader? So now what does systems think to, to get you do? It helps you think in a very broad way. You become a broad thinker, you become a wise person. How can I move beyond my understanding of a problem? So you, you go beyond your problem and you look at all the connections and say, what are the connections? You don't look at the problem as an event. You don't look at a problem as an event and say, behind that event, behind that behavior, there are connections. What are the connections I see? Right? How could the perspectives of others help me? You start to say, Wait, wait, this is my view. I also want to look at other people's view. So you are not saying, this is my view, this is the only view I have. No, you may be completely wrong. But when will you know you are wrong? When you look at other people's view and find out if there is any truth in their view. How will my solution play over the long run? This we saw. How will my solution become uh, play out over the long line? What will happen if I do this now? What unintended consequences might occur? And how do my actions, what I'm doing now, limit me from seeing other options? What are the other options I have? These are just the questions to get you started. These are not the only questions, but just think about these questions, right? And these are the two books you can start reading. The book on the left, that is the fifth discipline, is the book that, that completely changed my life. There are some brilliant stuff in that book. Just buy it and, and or, or download it or get it or whatever or ask someone to gift it to you. The second one, Donella Meadows is an expert in systems thinking. Little more difficult to read, but you can start. 
what I would suggest is I would suggest just go to Google and start Googling system thinking, learn it in a simple way, start practicing the habits and, and tell yourself that this one and a half hours has not been a waste of time, has been time well invested, has been time that, that you'll be happy with sometime, right? At some day you will say, Shiva, systems thinking, great subject. You know, many of you now can start thinking about system thinking, think about the habits and look at your own life, look at the lives of others, look at the elements and you will find great satisfaction in saying, I'm starting to understand life better. So thank you very much. It's been, um, I'm looking forward to the live session with all of you. And um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that all of us at some point can meet and learn more and more of systems thinking. Thank you.